Chapter 5 Jesus and Sin Jesus left his disciples in the world, but not of it. They were to serve it, but not be soiled with its sin. With sin he made no terms, and for it he had no quarter. But the world is a world of sin. How did Jesus bear himself towards it? And how did he propose to deal with it in himself and in the world? Well, first, there was none of it in him. He was the only man who ever lived in the world of whom this could be said. He knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He was tempted, of course. Otherwise, he could not have known us or been one with us. But he never even for one moment slipped into sin, Hebrews 4.15. He challenged the Jews to discover it in him. To be sure, this is only a challenge to men, and therefore an appeal to human judgment. But it implied the claim of sinlessness, John 8.46. Can you find a flaw or defect in Christ? Second, he declared that he had come to strike its chains from men. The word translated forgive in the Gospels means literally to send away, to let off. The Son of Man hath power to send away sin. Luke 5.24 Make a list of the instances where Jesus thus forgives sin, loosening its hold on men and women. Just how Jesus was to do this for all men in all time he did not fully explain. Paul explains in the sixth chapter of the Epistle to the Romans, But to do this always for all was the purpose of his coming. Matthew 1.21 And for this he died. See 1 Corinthians 15.3, Hebrews 9.28, 1 Peter 2.24, and 1 John 1.7. He hated sin and was its implacable foe. Third, there is a lesson for life here. Sin is not a thing to be dallied with. It is neither sufficient nor safe to take a mere negative attitude towards it. Loathe it. Jesus was a noble hater. How he dealt with sin when it approached his own soul is shown in the accounts of the temptation. Fourthly, Jesus deemed sin a slavery. Fourthly, Jesus deemed sin a slavery. Everyone that committeth sin is the bound servant of sin. John 8.34 And slavery was a thing Jesus abhorred. His gospel was a deliverance. Luke 4.18 His truth was to set men free. John 8.32-36 All contraction of life, all stifling of its larger liberties and comprehensions and upreachings, were repugnant to Jesus. And sin meant just these things. It cut men off from range after range of life by making them insensible towards it. See John 10.10, 10, John 4.14, 4, and 7.37, John 9.41, and John 8.24. And it bound them. Virtue and purity and truth do not bind men. They are wings. There is in goodness none of that throttling sense of imprisonment, of weighing down, which is the very essence of sin. Jesus lived in the heavens while he walked on earth, and he would not fasten himself to earth by sin. He would have us also pure. Find all the appeals he made to this effect. Fifth, this appears clearly in Jesus' teaching as to the real essence of sin. When the Holy Spirit should come, he said, he would convict the world of sin, because they believe not on me. John 16, 9. Sin is want of perception, of completeness of life, of adaption to our divinely intended environment, of connection with our true relationship. Sin is imperfectness, partiality of being. Jesus came to be the completer and the fulfiller of life, to reinstate our life in God. John 5, 24, 26, and 40. 
Sin is the denial of him, the refusal to take him. Unbelief in Christ is the great sin. What does this signify as to Christ's divinity? Sixth, but sin is not a matter of our slavery and loss only. It is an affront to God. The soul that has been touched with the consciousness of it is sensible of a burden of guilt which only God can lift because its essence is offense against him. The people felt this, Mark 2, 7 and Luke 5, 21. But Jesus said he had power to discharge men of this burden, Matthew 9, 6 and Luke 5, 24. What does this signify as to Christ's divinity? 7. Sin is not a sickness merely or a disease. It is a wicked thing, wrong and vile. It is God's gifts gone astray in their use. The New Testament word for it is missing the mark. That was what Jesus did not do. That was what he came to forgive us for doing and to prevent us from doing it again. It would be well for men if they thought of it now and acted toward it as Jesus did.